people who eat of it. The lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and lentil of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until morning. Anything that remains until morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you, for the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague will destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll read a portion of Psalm 78 by whole verse. In the daytime, he led them with a cloud, and all night long with a fiery light. He split the heart of the wilderness, and he gave them drink abundantly as from the deep. He made streams come out of the rock, and caused waters to overflow like waters. Yet they sinned still more against him, and them against the Most High in the desert. They tested God in their heart by demanding the food they craved. They spoke against God, saying, Can God spread a table in the wilderness? Even though he struck the rock so that water gushed out and torrents overflowed, can he also give bread or provide meat for his people? Yet he commanded the skies above and opened the doors of heaven. He rained down on them manna to eat and gave them the grain of heaven. Mortals ate of the bread of angels. He sent them food in abundance. A reading from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it and remember me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord Christ. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, 
but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, and not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet and put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed to do if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Please be seated. It has been five days since Jesus entered Jerusalem mounted on a donkey. It was a rock star procession. People had heard of Jesus' miracle in raising Lazarus from the dead and flocked to welcome this Messiah. If Jesus could raise a man from death to life, could he also raise Jerusalem from beneath the dead weight of the Roman Empire into life as a kingdom headed by a descendant of David? This Gospel of John skips over the tension and drama of these five days, but suffice it to say that the disciples have been on a high, still not fully understanding what Jesus has been teaching them about upcoming events. I wonder if the disciples expected to participate in a traditional celebration of Passover. In this year of 2023, the Jewish celebration of the Passover, or the Pesach, began at nightfall yesterday, April 5th, and ends on April 13th. The holiday is centered around the retelling of the biblical story of the Jewish people being freed from slavery in Egypt. Every family has its own Passover rituals, which may reflect family tradition or the denomination of Judaism. It incorporates themes of springtime, a Jewish homeland, family, remembrance of Jewish history, social justice, and freedom. Now, before the Passover, Jesus knew that his time had come. Picture the scene. Jesus and his disciples are in an upper room in a small house. It is supper time, late afternoon or early evening. Oil lamps may have been lit. The table may have been set with a variety of foods, lettuce, endive, horseradish, a sweet pastry, roasted lamb or goat, hard-boiled eggs, rounds of unleavened bread, and wine to drink. What is so special about this time together? Time itself. This hour marks the end of Jesus' public ministry 
and at the same time begins Jesus' private ministry to his disciples. Jesus is preparing the disciples whom he loves for the grief and terror of Good Friday, for the disbelief of the empty tomb three days later, and for the shape of their lives after Jesus the man is gone. For three years, these chosen men have been taught, tested, and tried by Jesus. And now they are gathered for an ordinary meal on an ordinary day in time, for an ordinary act of service by an extraordinary man. Jesus washes the disciples' feet, an act of humble service. Peter resists having his feet washed, this servant Jesus is not the man he expected. Peter had tied his star to this comet and saw a much different future for himself. Perhaps a future filled with a rise in personal status in the temporal world. This act of servant submission sets the tone for the disciples' mission moving forward into the world. The hallmarks of a true disciple are love and service over power and privilege. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I loved you, you should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Jesus' act of humble submission and service reflected in love is the church's model of mission into the world. And who acts within the model? Everyone. There are no classes, certifications, tests, uniforms, age or gender restrictions, no financial qualifications. Humility, service, and love are the gifts that keep on giving. Are you a disciple? Prayers of the People, 105, is found again on page 6. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love, and be found without fault at the day of your coming, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, the bishop, for our own prince, for our own bishop, for our partner bishops, Bonnie, Rayford, Craig, Moises, and Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, for all bishops and other ministers. We pray also for those in our diocese preparing for the sacred order of priests, including Joe, Barrett, Alex, Matt, and Anne Marie. We pray also for those in our diocese preparing for the sacred order of deacons, including Abraham, John, Stephanie, Thon, Jennifer, Justin, Jessica, Julianne, Beckett, Rachel, John, Linda, Kathy, Del, Joy, Mary, Catherine, and Teresa. We remember with gratitude the retired clergy of the diocese. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease and that all may be one as you and the Father are one. We pray to you, O Lord. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who do not yet believe, and for those who have lost their faith, that they may receive the light of the gospel, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among the nations and peoples, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those positions of public trust, especially Joe, our president, and Gretchen, our governor, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, especially Kathleen, Linton, Wes, Hope, Tom, Martin, Mylene, Tom, Don, Nathan, Candy, Jim, Jen, Jaden, Macy, Joe, Kathy, Pete, Suzanne, Steve, David, Sherry, and Janet. For refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this congregation, for those who are present, and for those who are absent. Be delivered from the hardness of heart, and show forth your glory in all that we do. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have commended themselves to our prayers, for our families, friends, and neighbors, that being free from anxiety, they may live in joy and peace and health. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the communion of your church, especially Sally Chapman and Dale Bush, and those whose faith is known home to you alone, that with all the saints they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but eternal life. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord, our God. For yours is the majesty, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. The Lord, after he had supped with his disciples and had washed their feet, and said to them, Do you know what I, you, Lord, your Lord and Master, have done for you? I have given you an example that you should do as I have done. Peace is my last gift to you, my own peace. I now leave with you peace which the world cannot give. I give to you. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. Peace is my last gift to you, my own peace. I now leave with you peace which the world cannot give. I give to you. By this shall the world know that you are my disciples, that you have love for one another. The congregation is invited to participate in the stripping of the altar or to sit in watchful presence as that is accomplished. You may leave at your own convenience. The service will continue tomorrow at 4 o'clock, Good Friday. <laughs>